Hey guys, guess what? What? It is less than two <gasps> weeks until Christmas. Like, are you guys ready? I am so excited. Mm -hmm. Christmas is like my favorite time of year. Just um, being able to share with people about Jesus' birth and the reason why we celebrate and then getting to spoil people. Like, I love shopping at Christmas time for presents for people. The rest of the year, I absolutely hate shopping but there's say. something different about <laughs> Christmas and being able to spoil people and celebrate Jesus so it's just I don't know it brings me so much joy that's awesome and I can testify she hates shopping the rest of the year I love all the activities that come with Christmas and Christmas time makes me think of snow and I love going figure skating and well I'm not that great of a figure skater I love going skating I love skiing I love all of it what's your favorite activity in the snow but Speaking of, we should head over to Snowy Ridge and see what's in store for us today. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, today as we explore the icy trails and the snowy ridges of God's beautiful creation. My name is Chantel. And I'm Jeremy. We're gonna have a blast together out here in this winter wonderland, but one thing to keep in mind are the rules of the great outdoors. Everywhere you go, you'll see plenty of opportunities to love God by being in awe of the incredible things that he's made. Yeah, and you'll have the chance to love others by respecting those around you while we're out here enjoying the cold. That's right, and speaking of being out in the cold, Today, we're going to find out what it looks like to survive in some extreme temperatures. Wow, I am so excited to hear more about that. Me too. But in the meantime, I have an idea. Why don't we get prepared for the winter weather by having a little contest? <laughs> Let's do it! We're going to put a picture on the screen of some winter weather survival gear. Each piece is buried in the snow. We are going to race to find each piece of the winter gear you see on the screen and then put it on. The first contestant to find every piece of gear and dress themselves like the pitcher will be the winner. Okay, let's look at what we're searching for. Looks like each of you will be searching the snow for earmuffs, ski goggles, a scarf, and gloves. But we actually lost some of that in the avalanche last year. We so we'll be looking for boots, a scarf, gloves, and a toque. Are you ready to play? Great. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. go. instructions and following them closely yes and when you're trying to survive in the winter wild you have to really be good at that for sure spending time in the middle of God's beautiful creation is a is a great way to grow our, our friendship with him out here in nature you don't have to worry about all the distractions you might have at school or at home yeah and that's there's so much to discover just by getting quiet and spending time outside thinking about God and being with him Sometimes it's even good to bring your Bible along so that you can read God's Word without anything to take your attention from it. That's true. One thing we can all learn here in the great outdoors, uh, and really anywhere, is that we can read God's Word. All right, everybody say this after me as loud as you can. All right, you ready? I can. I can. Read God's Word. Read God's Word. You all sounded great. Reading our Bibles is one way that we can grow our friendship with God. That's absolutely right. Well, guess what? Our friend Jack is here today to tell us all about some extreme winter survival. Yeah, he's got so much knowledge when it comes to surviving in the below freezing weather. Totally. Here, check it out. My people, I'm so excited you're hanging with me today. It's me, Jack. Right now, we are out in some extremely cold winter weather. I'm talking temps below zero. That's right, we brave in it. See. The thing about winter weather is that it can be really cool or it can be really dangerous. 
You just got to know the right things to do and don't do. Check it. Being out in God's beautiful creation allows us to see how awesome God really is. But I've learned a thing or two along the way, and I've taken it upon myself to create what I call the Winter Extreme Survival Guide. This is my own personal list of things you need to know if you're going to be staying alive in the Sub-Zero. Here's the deal. When you're out in the cold, you gotta make sure you're wearing the right stuff because frostbite is a real thing. You're gonna need a heavy coat and some really sturdy boots. And one thing you're most definitely gonna wanna know is how to build a fire. You heard that right, fire. I know, I know. You're thinking, Jack, snow is made from water and water puts out fire. How can you possibly build a fire on top of frozen water? Well, believe it or not, you can. Here's how you go about it. Grab some dry branches from the bottom of a tree. Look out for a dry spot on the ground, pile that up, and get your fire started. Pretty cool, huh? But that's not all, my friends. This is awesome, too. You may not realize it, but snow can keep you warm. Yeah, you heard that right. If you're feeling that chill that you just can't shake, dig yourself a small tunnel big enough for your body to fit in, then crawl down in there, close up the hole with your backpack, and boom, the snow has trapped your body heat and you're all warmed up. Now, just as important as knowing what to do while surviving in the cold is knowing what you cannot do. You got to stay hydrated. But eating snow is not the way to go because it will actually take your body temp even further down. You also need to know what not to eat. Hopefully, you've packed some carb-loaded snacks, but in case you didn't, stay away from eating wild mushrooms. And don't be trying to share a rabbit with the eagle who caught it. Instead, you gotta go for the bugs you find crawling around or eat the flower buds you find growing on the trees. Hey, they may be slimy or taste like cardboard boxes, but I'd take that over getting sick any day. And I'm catching your snow drift. You're asking yourself where I got the knowledge for my survival guide in the first place. And it's simple, really. I just read and read and read and read. I mean, how else am I gonna learn that kitty litter keeps your feet from slipping while you're out in the icy tundra? Here's the deal, my friends. If you're wanting to learn, you have gotta read. You wanna know why God's great outdoors are so awesome? Read. You wanna know why God created the great outdoors in the first place? Read. You're hearing me right. Reading is the way to survive and thrive. So what are we waiting for? Let's get after it. That was awesome. I can hardly believe all that it takes to survive out here in the winter. Yeah, and to think that Jack read up so much that he was able to create his own survival guide. Wow. You know, when Jack said that he'd been reading up on God's creation, I think he was talking about the Bible. You may be right. Let's find out. What's up, my people? You know me, and you know I love to read. The more you read, the more you really understand and get to know God. Reading God's Word can show you all the really cool things there are to learn about Him. And I can think of one extremely awesome story from the Bible to show you what I mean. Check this. Jesus was super busy traveling around, teaching people, and healing those who were sick and hurting. Everyone was amazed at the things He was saying and doing. And news of His awesomeness was spreading like wildfire. One day, Jesus was traveling to Nazareth, the town where He grew up. You heard that right. Even Jesus had a hometown, and he landed there because he was about to teach people something they never forget. Our story picks up on the Sabbath day, which means it was church day. So Jesus went to worship at the synagogue, just like he did every Sabbath day. At one point in the service, Jesus stood up to read, because that's what people did back then. And you best believe, if Jesus was talking, people were going to be listening. He was reading from a book of the Bible called Isaiah and he turned to one part and read it out loud. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. He sent me to tell prisoners that they are free and to tell the blind that they can see again. He sent me to free those who have been treated badly and to announce that the time has come for the Lord to show his kindness. After reading, Jesus sat back down. Everyone was locked in to every word Jesus had to say at this point. Jesus knew he had their attention, so he began to speak again. He said, While you heard me reading these words just now, they were coming true. 
And Jesus was right. God had sent him to tell everyone how much God loves them and wants to help them. The people had been waiting on God to send someone to fix their friendship with him. And that's what Jesus was there to do. Can you imagine Jesus standing right in front of your face talking to you? Cool, huh? So Jesus spent three whole years traveling around and showing people what they can learn about God when they read his word. And as the people listened to Jesus, he opened up their minds to understand what God's word meant for them. Awesome, right? Here's the deal. Reading God's word helps us to see who he really is and what he wants us to do. Just like spending time with a friend will help us get to know them better, when we take the time to read God's word, we will grow in our friendship with him. And since I'm always trying to grow my friendship with God, I've got some reading to do. Because the coolest part, you can never stop growing in your friendship with God. Thanks, Jack. You always know how to put things into perspective so we can all understand more about who God really is and grow our friendship with him. Knowing that I can read God's word makes me want to dive into my Bible right now. Absolutely. And that Bible story made me think of a super fun game we could all play. What do you think? I say let's do it, whatever it is. So what did you have in mind? Well, we all know that there's lots of things to do and see out in nature. So I was thinking we could play a game called Clear the Air. Uh, we'll see a picture of something, but it's not going to be very clear. We'll give a few people a chance to guess what they think the picture is actually showing before it completely clears up and we can see what it is. Hmm. Awesome. This sounds like so much fun. You know it. I'm ready for the first one. Are you guys ready? When you know what it is, tell who you're with or type it below. All right, let's see it. It's a snow-covered church. That church reminds me of the synagogue that Jesus was at during our story. It's a great reminder that Jesus spent time in the synagogue every Sabbath. Exactly. Now let's see our second picture. Ready? Here we go. It's actually a national park sign. Wait a second. Why'd you put that one in here? Well, because kind of like you read a park sign, it reminded me of how Jesus read. Oh yeah, Jesus read from the book of Isaiah, and when he did, he was talking about himself. Jesus was reminding the people that God had promised to send a savior, and he was it. That was crazy cool. Okay, I have one last picture for you guys. This one is kind of tricky, but it's good. Okay, let's see it. Remember to shout out your guesses. This is two friends playing out in the snow. Hey, that's a great one. Those friends are a great reminder for us that when we spend time with God and read what he says in the Bible, our friendship with him will grow. Today has been so much fun, and I hope you guys will come back to spend some time with us again next week, too. Yeah, but before you go, I think we should get quiet so that we can pray and talk to God. Everyone, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's all talk together to God. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word, the Bible. Help us to take time each day to read it so we can grow our friendship with you. We love you. Amen. Amen. I love talking to God, and I've had so much fun hanging out with you guys today. Me too. It's time for you to be heading down the mountain to small group. See you later. Wow, what a great reminder today was. That when we spend time with God and when we read what he says in the Bible, that our friendship with him will grow. It's so, so amazing. So today we're going to sing Rescuer because when we have a friendship with God, he's going to rescue us. And that is just the most amazing gift. And then head on over to this OneDrive link to do small group time with your family. Um, this is such a fun thing um, that you get to do together. And next week if you didn't join us today we're doing small group time on zoom at 9 a.m so come and join us there mm -hmm. um we've had a blast doing it and we would love to see you there too um but that's all we've got for today so um have an amazing week and hopefully we'll see you soon bye, bye.